stand too. <laughs> My name is Taylor. Would you please stand for the scripture reading? Today's scripture come from Matthew 13, 1 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seeds, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still, other seed fell on good soil where it, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? He replied, Because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and they will have in abundance. Whoever does not have, even what they will have will be taken from them. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not hear or understand. In them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. You will be ever seeing, but never perceiving. For this people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes, hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, because they see, and your ears, because they hear. For truly, I tell you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see, but did not see it, and hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they only last a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the world, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Would you remain standing as we pray? Lord, would you make us like the good soil? Lord, break up the soil that is too hard in our lives so that the seed, your word, can be implanted deep into our souls. Lord, clear the weeds of our lives. Lord, dig down deep into the soil away, making it not shallow but deep so that your word can penetrate our hearts. Lord, we pray this in your name. We thank you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and God's people with joy shouted, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. All this week, I've been thinking of this image of the sower, as Glenn was talking about the Spirit of the Lord, this being Pentecost, and, and just thinking and believing that the Lord is speaking and does speak. Amen? Amen. Speaks today. I've been thinking this week of this image of a wild sower. Someone, it seems like this guy is a madman, this sower in this image. He's just throwing it here. He's throwing it there. He's throwing it everywhere. Like, dude, pay attention to where you're throwing it. It's, it's landing in the, the rose bush, the thorns. It's landing on the sidewalk. It's landing in soil that's clearly too shallow. What are you doing, man? Like, calm down. You're wasting the seed. My, I have a, a saying that I've been saying. You ever say sayings that your parents said and you're saying them now? That's, I guess that's a part of growing up. My mom's here. She used to say, maybe she still does, you say the willy-nilly. You say that? Will, this guy is willy-nilly. This sower is haphazardly sowing. He's throwing seed around. Who does this? What kind of image is this person just throwing seed? He's just throwing it and throwing it. It's in his hair. He's getting it. He's throwing it everywhere. Seed is everywhere. Who does this? Look up here. Consider these words. You know who does this? Someone with endless seed. Do you know who does this? This is an image of our Heavenly Father that loves us, that gives away His mercy 
and his grace and his word. And some of you just need to hear that today. I've been thinking about that uh, several times. Just that image has brought me to tears of just the Lord before us, after us. There's so much seed. And if all we do is come to church and just say, Lord, I'm open. Lord, speak to me. Maybe that seed will land deep inside of you and it will grow and it will become a, a crop that bears fruit a thousand, a hundred, thirty times what it was sown. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's get into this passage. I have five points of this sermon, which is, if, you, if you've been coming here, that is a lot. Thank you for pointing that out. That's a, usually a... Uh, 99% of my sermons are three. Every once in a while, like last week, I threw out a two-pointer. But this one is a five-pointer. So hold on. Buckle up. Um, the first one is to talk generally about parables and what they are. And then we're going to get into, very quickly, all four types of soils. One, two, three, four. The four soil types that the Word of God, these seeds, land on. Make sense? Let's jump in dive in. Point number one is this. Jesus speaks in parables, and he says this. He quotes from Isaiah. Jesus speaks in parables that we might turn and be healed. Jesus speaks in parables, a whole bunch of them. One third of every word that came out of Jesus' mouth was in the form of a story of a parable. That's nuts. That's crazy. That's like if all that this guy, all he was doing was telling stories. It, it says in this passage that the multitudes came. We think that there was probably a thousand, more than a thousand people. Imagine without mics trying to speak to a thousand people. Jesus had this great idea: get onto a boat, go onto the into the Sea of Galilee, and he would speak to the people on the shore. And it didn't say. It doesn't say he taught them and spoke in parables. It says he, he taught them in parable. That's all he, he got out into the boat. All these people are like, quiet. He's, there's no microphone. Quiet. What's he going to say? And he began to tell them stories. His disciples come to them and say, why are you always speaking in these stories? If we count up, if we kind of broaden the view of what a parable is to a word picture, like uh, if we even include like uh, don't remove the, the speck out of your brother's eye if you have a plank in your own eye, or the, the word picture of the, the vines and the, the uh, branches, if, if we broaden our uh, definition of parable to that, then there are 65 of these things that Jesus, that's like all he did was tell stories. His disciples come to him and say, well, Jesus, why do you speak like this? And the, the short of it is this, he speaks to them so that they will not understand. I'm sorry, what? So what? <laughs> speaks to them so they won't get it, so the multitudes will not understand what he's saying. I'm sorry, run that by me again. He's speaking so that they won't, like, why? What is going on here? I imagine it's something like uh, husbands and wives talking. Sometimes the, the, the communication breaks down, never in our marriage, me and Erica, because we're, we're perfect. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. Um, but usually husbands and wives are like, all right, don't forget to get the things and, and pick up the stuff. There's no formula. So, so just make sure you do it right. Okay. Husband's like, yeah, I got it. I've been listening. He's like, no, you haven't. You haven't been listening. What would what, I just say then? And husbands have this uh, insane ability to be able to uh, repeat back the last phrase. It's like, go oh, get the things and do the stuff. And there's no formula. So, so make sure I do it right. Easy. And then it's like, well, what are we talking about though? Can you summarize like what it is we're even saying? And you're like, yeah, we're t of course I could. We're talking about the, the, you know, the what we were talking about, right? I mean, I mean, right? We're talking about right? The, the, uh, I have no idea. I have no idea what we're talking about. And this, the Jesus speaks in such a way that it like triggers us to like, are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening. I got it. No, you don't. You, you really don't. You have ears and you're hearing, but you're not hearing. You have eyes. You think you're seeing, but you're not seeing. Jesus is telling these parables. He teaches in stories because he wants people to actually hear, actually see with eyes and ears that will turn them and then they will be healed. Listen to this quote by a, a New Testament scholar. It'll mess you up. Jesus' parables serve to tease the mind of his audience, throw them off balance, 
challenge them to decide for or against his claim on their lives. The parables are not pretty Sunday school stories. They are troubling riddles meant to destroy any false sense of security and create a fierce feeling of urgency. This is like, you're quiet because I hope you're not asleep. This is seriousness setting in. The reason why Jesus spoke this way is that we might want more. It's kind of like, a, is anybody in here a foodie? You know what a foodie? Foodies like, like food and they, uh, they know what pairs with different things. Uh, I usually pair like uh, Folgers and ramen together. I think that's a good... <laughs> But if you go to like, my wife and I have been to the Cliff House a few times, uh, the, and, and there's like a course, like a, I call it a meal deal. They have like the courses lined up, and they come out with like this huge tray and these two tiny little plates, and, and they, they give you a, a mouche bouche. Do you know what that is? It's a French word for to tease the mouth, and then, and then they give you an appetizer, then there's the salad, then... There's the meal. And, and what they're hoping to do is that these things would actually increase your appetite. They would feed you so that you become more hungry. It's, it was somewhat what Jesus is doing here. And so you imagine getting the moosh boosh and you're like, what is this, a joke? And you just leave the restaurant. You're like, this is ridiculous. Pop it in your mouth. That was pretty good, but I'm out of here. What a joke. I'm, st- I'm starving. And it's like, yeah, you missed the whole point. Imagine the multitudes listening to these sermons and just saying, this, this is silly. Who is this guy? He's just telling stories. What is this? And yet there was some that were completely transformed. I pray this morning that we would be like those that are transformed, that we would be like those that ask the question, what does this mean? Like, what is this? Just to stop and to pause, to gaze upon the beauty. If I may, like that guy years ago, the double rainbow guy, uh, it's like, this is so beautiful. This is so beautiful. And then he asked the question, what does it mean? That we might ask, look at this parable and ask the question, what does it mean? Jesus says this about, about the, the crowds, and, and it may be about us. I pray that the, the, the second half is about us hearing and hear. But the people's heart has become calloused. They hardly hear with their ears. They have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and I pray this is us, to turn and then I would heal them. So let's listen to this parable. Let's restudy this parable. There are four soils. The sower sows seed in the soil, and the soil is our soul. One, two, three, four. The first one is this hard sidewalk. The second one is, is going to be the shallow ground. The third one is going to be amongst the weeds and the thorn. And the fourth one, he saves the best for last. That is the good soil. So let's get into this. Soil number one is the calloused hearts. This is probably the ones he is warning about when he's quoting Isaiah. This, this multitude, they have, they've calloused their hearts. The point is this, God's word on the wayside is snatched up. It's the seed that is uh, scattered and it hits the sidewalk, it hits the path, the ground is too hard, and it just sits there. And then what happens? The birds come in and they snatch it up. Anybody like birds? I like birds too. I, uh, I think they're pretty. I like them. I took ornithology in college, one of my favorite classes. In this circumstance, the birds are flying rats. They are monsters. You're sitting at a, at a, at a park reading a newspaper and birds fly over. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, you're at a beach and you see a kid crying, holding popcorn, and there's seagulls all around him. Do you get the image now? Like this is the ancient world image that birds are not these fun little things. Birds are there to destroy the crop. Jesus says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes, snatches away what was sown in their hearts. This is the seed along the path. Wow. Wow. I, I think um, there, there's the saying, Jesus smile, Jesus loves you. The other side of that is probably run, Satan hates you. Can you imagine a t-shirt? Front side says, smile, Jesus loves you. The back says, run, Satan hates you. Did I say that right? Um, 
you're, you're laughing, but it's true. Like, is it too early to be talking about this? Like, there is an evil one. There is the evil of this world, and it's there to snatch away what was sown. It lands on hard soil, and it is snatched away. These, these birds come in, and, and Jesus, it's amazing that this parable, it's one of the few parables where we have Jesus actually explaining and interpreting. The best interpreter of Scripture is Scripture, and, and even better is like when Jesus himself interprets it for us. And he says these, these seeds are snatched up by the evil one. Do you have any things in your life that are seed snatchers? Do you have seed snatching friends in your life that you maybe need to distance yourself from? Do you have seed snatching websites? Do you have seed sa- snatching substances in your life? Do you have seed snatching apps in your life? I can think of one that's, it, the, the logo is even a bird. Oh. <laughs> if you can't say amen, say ouch. <laughs> But these things, right, in our life that snatch God's good word from us. I was talking with my son. Erica reminded me of this story. I think it's from a year and a half ago, two years ago. So Jay would have been five. Um, He's a very, I mean, I might be a little biased, but my kids are brilliant. And um, (laughs) Jay was just, we were talking about this parable. And with the wisdom of the five-year-old, he was like, why did the, the guy plant the seeds on the sidewalk? It was just one of these conversations where the kid was asking questions. I was just kind of being quiet, and he was answering his own questions. Kids will do that, kind of just talking to himself out loud. He's like, why would this guy throw seeds on the sidewalk? That's silly, right, Dad? And I was like, yeah, that's silly. And he's going through in his little mind. He said, well, maybe he did that because sometimes, Dad, there's cracks in the sidewalk, and the seed gets in those cracks. And then, like, those seeds seeds, they grow up and become huge plants because there's good soil underneath that sidewalk. Right, Dad? And I was just like, yeah, there, yeah. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. And the, as the wisdom that it, let it be from a five-year-old, I pray that there would be, there's those, those of us in here and every one of us have hard places in our life where the, the word of the Lord, it just hits a rock I pray, Lord, even if these cracks in our lives hurt, that they would be there, that these seeds would, would get in there and grow and then produce. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's, um, let's look at this next type of soil. There's one, two, three, four types of soil. The second type of soil is, do you remember? Rocky. Yeah, the rocky, uh, shallow ground. The next point is this. God's word in shallow, rocky places comes up quickly only to get withered by the sun. These shallow soils. Um, do you ever, I, I'm sure you know lots of people like this, unfortunately, very unfortunately. People become believers and very quickly uh, get a part of church. It's like, oh, I want to I wanna meet with you every week, and I, I want a new Bible, and I got the Christian t-shirts, and they start referring to people as brother and sister. They change all their Facebook pictures to Jesus and good things, and this is great. This is all wonderful things. Praise the Lord. Some of these people have the silver chip from AA that says they've been sober for 24 hours. Praise the Lord. Wow, this is great. This is wonderful. They are on the path. They are, they are doing well. The seed has been planted they come up quickly and then what can you i think we could all uh, know personally i know lots of people that are now nowhere to be found sadly like like man they were so hungry for the lord they were so passionate for the lord they came up so quickly i remember at the college ministry i was i did video announcements and sometimes we would do testimony videos and anybody mill mill people a, a couple <laughs> A few uh, faithful hands. Uh, and so we do some of these videos. Sometimes we'd film people sharing their testimony. This happened, I could name two times, where we filmed someone, sadly. Um, um, the story starts off good. Like they, they had a radical 
change in their life. Um, one of them came, like, was looking for a place, this is, this is harsh, this is real life here, looking for a place to kill themselves. And they, they came, they were driving by New Life, saw the building, like, wow, there, there's a church, I, best, I guess I better just go to church, get right with God before I go out and do this thing, is what they thought. And they came and there's like, ended up giving their life to God and then it radically changing and li- like, wow, this person is now a month and a half down down this road of faithfully living for Christ, radical testimony. We filmed their vi- video testimony. We, we did this uh, a couple times. I can think of two times. We filmed these things, edited them, uh, got the date where we were going to show it to everyone to celebrate. And then two times this happened. We're just like, hey, let's, let's not show that video tonight. Um, so-and-so is, is not doing well. They're, they're back and they're they're not living for the Lord anymore. They're, they're, let's, let's wait on that. And that video just got way, and then, and then it never got showed. Lord, save us. Lord, help us. And what's, I think about, what's the difference? You know, a farmer looking at these two seeds, one's on shallow ground, maybe he doesn't know that it's shallow, one's in the good soil. They both look great, right? Is there any difference in the, in the, the plants? Like, no, only time will tell the difference of these two plants, it's hard to judge. I remember when I was 20 years ago, 1999, half my life ago, uh, I was passionate for the Lord and, and really passionate. I was staying uh, with a friend in Florida and I was reading, I read the whole Bible in, in that summer. I, I got up with the guys every morning early, prayed every evening before we went to bed, prayed, went to a Bible study every other week, just literally lived in a church. It was all, I was growing. I was excited. I was always talking about the Lord. I was going out on the campuses and inviting people into this ministry, telling people about God. I was just, I was passionate for the Lord. And I remember someone, I think, looking back, I imagine they were just jealous. They were just someone who was kind of, they, they didn't, they thought I was too emotional. They thought I was too excited about what the Lord was doing. And they, they called me on it. They were like, hey, you, you know, you might want to slow down with this Bible reading. So you might have to calm down. They reminded me of this, you know, you're, you're like the, you don't want to be sh- shallow soil. You're popping up. You're doing too much too quickly. You're too emotional about this whole thing. And praise the Lord, it's been 20 years. That guy was wrong. I'm still reading the Bible. I'm still passionate about the Lord. I pray for another 20 years and another 20 years after that. It's hard to judge, but time is that judge. Jesus says, some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they got withered because they had no root. The trouble, the persecution, the sun of this life burns away those that really aren't those that have no roots. And so I have a question for you before we move on to the other soils. It's a question just for you, question just for your own mind, question for all of us in here. You don't have to raise your hand or anything, but how deep is your soil of your life? How, how deep are your roots going right now? Is your uh, Christian life, is it, is it just subsurface or is it deep? Is it every part of your being going down and transforming your life so that you will turn and you may be healed, like Jesus said? Third point is this. It's the next type of soil. God's word in the thorns gets the life choked out of it. God's word in the thorns gets the life choked choked out of it. The sower sows seeds, there's, there's the sower sowed seeds, and there's weeds, and there's thorns, and it comes up, and there's not enough room for this plant. The, the worries, the financial things of this world choke it from real life. If there's any parable, uh, any one of these soils in this parable that is for us in this day and age, I think it's this one. I think it's the, the distractions of this world, the, um, could I say the word busyness without that triggering stress in you? I don't, I don't know. Like that we live in a culture that there's always something, there's always busy, busy, like our life, the word of God inside of us comes up and it's just choked. Jesus says it like this, the seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. Money, problems, worries, the stress of this life hinders 
the real life, the real life to come, the busyness, the mo money, mo problems, choke out the real life that Christ has given us and is deep into our hearts and it comes up and it just can't live. I think um, many of us need to do a self-inventory of our life, like thinking through these things. It's something that I, I know Brett is interested in. He mentioned a long time ago, he uh, would love to sit down with people. I know I would as well. Like, let's look at your life. Maybe this is just a self thing where you just go through your life and think about how, like, how busy am I? I think we'd all in here say, of course, that's, that's the, the motto of our day. We're just so busy. And that is choking, is that choking the life, the actual spiritual life of your lives, your finances, quiet time, diet, exercise, time spent on entertainment versus time spent with the Lord, your sleep patterns, your stress levels, all of these things. What does your life look like? This is real important stuff. Jesus says these thorns and these weeds, these things will actually choke the living word from your life and will make it to wither like the other type of soil. Final soil, final point, Jesus saves the best for last. It is this, God's seed in good soil reaps a harvest. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. There's something truly wonderful about people when they receive the word and it, it just abounds in them and they can become like another sower, sowing seed in other people's lives, bringing them to the, the knowledge of the Lord so that they might turn and then be healed. Look at this scripture. It says, but the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Look up here. Listen to this. Don't miss this. This is the soil that is good looks like this. They hear it, then they understand it, and they retain it. And then what? They pr produce a good crop that is 130. It's, it's, it's much more than what was planted. The good crop coming from good soil because the seed is always good. We all of us in this room have soil that is hardened, soil that is shallow, soil that has other weeds and things in it. But I pray this morning as we prepare our hearts for communion, as we prepare our lives to receive the word of God, I pray that we would be like this good soil, ready to receive, coming in here, ready to receive from the Lord what he would have for us, his good word. I want you to think about this image of communion and, and taking of, of the, the bread and the cup. This is something, it's this mystery where we tangibly have this thing. We will receive it, we'll take it, and we'll eat it. And it's like this image, if we can be so bold to compare these words, like a seed entering into soil, like the mystery of communion reminding us of the word of God that is inside of us. This is a picture of what the Lord does. Would you stand with me? I'm going to reread this scripture of what Jesus says this parable is like. If you're in the band, you can come forward. Brett is going to lead us to the table in just a minute. But I want you to take a moment and meditate on these words. I want you to take a moment and receive like the good soil, the word that is being spoken to us. These words are the words of God himself. Fully God, one of us, on a boat, speaking to the crowds. He could say anything. He could have said anything he wanted, and he takes time to tell a story. So listen to these words. Verse 18 says, listen to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes. He snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed along the path. Verse 20 says, the seed falling on the rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word, at once receives it with joy, but since it has no root, it only lasts a short time. 
When trouble and persecution comes because of the word, they fall away quickly. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands that this is the one who produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what is sown. 